I'm David Owen Norris and this is Romsey Abbey in the valley of the River Test in Hampshire. And on Friday, September the 14th at 7.30, we're performing my oratorio prayer book in this wonderful building. Prayer book is an oratorio about tradition and change and it's a potted history of all the religious and political conflicts that we've had in England since the 1500s. Prayer book begins with a prelude, just the three trombones on their own, and I rather fancifully think of this as being God breathing. it sounds much better with the trombone glissando because by putting the slides in and out they can do a sort of slidey noise. the argument with the famous words from one of the prefaces of the prayer book and he says there was never anything by the wit of man so well devised or so sure established which hath not in continuance of time been corrupted and the chorus hisses and then the choir and the barbershop quartet sing in this our time the minds of men are so diverse some think it a great matter of conscience to depart from a piece of the least of their ceremonies. They be so addicted to their old customs. And again, on the other side, some be so newfangled that they would innovate all things and so despise the old that nothing can like them but that it is new. And then there's this wonderful sentence of balance which goes, It hath been the wisdom of the Church of England Keep the mean between the two extremes. To keep the mean between the two extremes, and that sets up the tonal argument, the argument of keys throughout the whole piece, because the whole piece is are we going to be in E or E flat? And that last phrase. the key that the baritone picks up for his first aria. I have become involved in many arguments. I have become involved in many arguments. A journey, a journey, a journey. I have become involved in many arguments. I have become involved in many arguments. A journey, a journey. The first part of prayer book that I wrote, I remember I was in Prague doing Yaroslav Jezek's Jazz Piano Concerto, and in between the rehearsal and the performance, a calypso idea occurred to me for John Keeble's translation, Hail Gladdening Light of His Pure Glory Poured, and I thought of this sort of antiphonally amongst trebles. <laughs> And then, and I put that between oh, four different parts in the end so that it comes from all sides and forms just a sort of... And over the top of it there's a tune. favourite word 
words in the Book of Common Prayer are the rubric in choirs and places where they sing, here followeth the anthem. And so I thought I'd set that as a little unaccompanied choral piece called Rubric. It's very simple chords. terrific lineup of musicians. The opera singer Peter Savage is singing the baritone solos. Fiona Hymns is the soprano solos. We've got the boys of New College Oxford and a barbershop quartet from Clare College, Cambridge. David Coram is playing the wonderful organ in Romsey Abbey. We've got the Navarra String Quartet, one of the best choirs in the country, the Wayne Pleat Singers based in Winchester, and the vicar of Romsey is going to play the cymbals. I remember I was in New York City one very hot April. I was recording some Schoenberg, and in between where I was staying and the Schoenberg, there was a, a long trip on the A-train. And it was on the A-train that I wrote a double fugue, of which I'm, I'm very proud of it, actually. It's a setting of the Table of Kindred and Affinity, wherein are given the degrees that, that may not marry together. A man may not marry his. And so I put the words into a sort of rhythmic order, and the fugue subject comes out. A man may not marry his grandfather's wife, father's sister, wife's daughter, his mother's stepmother, wife's mother's son's daughter, his wife's mother's daughter, his sister's son's wife, and so on. It's a bit of a tongue twister. It's very hard work for the barbershop quartet. And that works out as a fugue until at a certain point in the middle, because it's all about marriage, I thought we'd have that little bit uh, from the marriage service. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together in the presence of God, and so on. And so that's a second fugue subject, which in its turn is worked out. <laughs> At the end of that section, we get to the If any man no cause or just impediment, let him declare it. At which point the chorus says, Or else! And then the barbershop say, Or else for ever hold his peace. And then the two subjects are combined so that it's a proper double fugue. <laughs> And then at the end, there's a, there's a coda, which begins with everybody singing an inversion of the first few subject. And then we have... translation, the famous passage from the epistle to the Corinthians, uh, comes out as, now we see in a glass, even in a dark speaking. I love that phrase, dark speaking. But then we shall see face to face. Now I know imperfectly, but then shall I know even as I am known. Now abideth faith, hope, love. Big surprise to me that Tyndale doesn't say charity, like the King James Bible does. Tyndale says faith, hope, and love. And the chords that underpin this are um, But of course that passage begins with some very terrifying words about when that which is perfect hath come, that which is imperfect shall be done away.
mentioned that the Vicar of Romsey, Tim Sledge, is going to play the cymbals. And he's got just one chance to get it right because there's only one cymbal clash in the whole piece. And it's the moment when we decide that it was in E-flat all along. And there's a big roll on the drums. And then, pow, the cymbals clash. And there's a seven-fold arm end. <laughs> <laughs>